Welcome to the D&D Fitness Radio Podcast, brought to you by your hosts, Don Saladino from New York City and Derek Hansen from Vancouver, Canada. We're ready. I had to go old school. Oh my God, this was so not fun. <laughs> this is why I sell dumbbells and not tech equipment. I know, but I mean, we have to talk about that. So Aaron, this is Derek <laughs> No, I'm so sorry. This is perfect. I need to like get it. I have like eight chins. Okay. So Derek is my podcast partner. We're on like episode seven. I think today he's like 71 or 72 or something. 71. Wow. 71. And Derek's in Vancouver and I'm in Long Island. So we're like, we're very far, you know, we're very far. Very very good social distancing here. (laughs) That's, yeah. You don't need a tape measure. And you are in Rhode Island. I am in Rhode Island. And let's talk about Perform Better for a second, because I think in the last uh, two weeks, our, our worlds have kind of turned upside down in the, in the gym industry. And you guys are a, like my Perform Better family. Derek, this is a team I've been working with since I've had Drive Open 15 years ago. Aaron, how long have you been with them for? 15 years. Yeah. So we've been. Yeah. Wow. Geez. I'm so old. <laughs> you look great. But you're not going to talk about that. We are going to talk about, so within 15 years, I mean, you guys have been facilitating collegiate gyms, high school gyms, um, gyms like myself, in-home gyms, but that hasn't been a big part of it. And then, like, what happened to your guys' business in the last two weeks? Like, can you talk to us about that? Honestly, yeah. In the last two weeks, um, we thought people were going to have to start working from home and it would be slow and everyone would kind of just be taking naps and not doing much all day. Um, and that's not the case. I wish in a weird way we had a little bit of that, but um, mm-hmm. we really exploded. And as bad as everything is, I feel terrible saying like it helped us a lot yeah. because we were able to help other people. Um, but really our whole business model changed overnight. So from being a commercial equipment dealer and you know outfitting professionals and schools and colleges and we literally overnight changed to every trainer going online and now all their gym members have need equipment have to go somewhere and need help and it's it literally we went from a you know b2b to a bnc and it's right it was insane Derek, I mean, it's funny. It was, um, I mean, in the last week alone, I can't even begin to tell you how many people, I mean, simple orders though. I mean, th- these aren't like, I mean, I had one client of mine who built like, I mean, when everything was going down, like put an order in for like a full all out gym. Otherwise people have been ordering like rowers and ergs and bikes. And like, I'm almost urging people now because this is so bizarre. It's not like, it's not like it's one week where you're like, okay, let's just do some body weight stuff. Let's get by. Yeah. Like, no, you like, Order like order some dumbbells, order some bands, like get an adjustable bench, do something. Um, Derek, did you add it, did you add anything when this all went down, or do you have enough in your house already? I have so much stuff. It's it's <laughs> my, my wife is constantly trying to get me to get rid of shit. But um, well, there's a friend who bought like a, a a wall rack and a bar, but he cannot find a plate, a a barbell plate to save his life. He can't find it on Craigslist or anything. He cannot get a weight. It's hilarious. That's, yeah. That's the biggest issue right now is it started out with kettlebells and those flew through because a lot of consumers want them. And then it went to dumbbells because all the kettlebells were all the popular sizes were going out. And now it's kind of like, okay, let's throw around some real weight and everyone doesn't have bars or plates or luckily we still do. And that's the biggest thing right now that I've seen is you're seeing more people get the Olympic barbell sets instead of, you know, the single kettlebell. Cause they're just like panicking and they're like, all right, well, if you don't have dumbbells, get me something that's bigger. Like that's crazy. Yeah. Pretty soon it'll be weight vests and they'll be taking the weights out, like going crazy. Well, what, I mean, so how long does this stuff take to make? Is it, is it not, is it more about the delivery and it's more about like, like a lot of these, uh, these facilities are shut down that actually make this equipment. Is that what it is? It's not even making the equipment. I think it was just the overflow of people um, stocking the equipment. Luckily, we had great stock um, and we were able to keep that stuff on the shelf. Mm -hmm. It was more, I think, a lot of people weren't prepared for it. So for some states, if they had to shut down, 
I mean, you can't get into your warehouse. So that's kind of our biggest concern right now is if anyone in our warehouse gets sick and I have to say, we've done an amazing job splitting the shifts up. So instead of having one shift of normal hours, we're running three shifts right now, starting at six in the morning and ending around midnight. Wow. So that way it limits the people in there. We're working extra hours, but it's still like, I mean, you're down numbers, but if one person gets sick, that entire warehouse is going down. So right now, luckily, we're trying to keep everyone moving with the least amount of people and the least amount of, you know, interaction. Because right. if, if anything happens and we have to shut down, we're, I mean, we're screwed. We can take orders, but that's not going to help people out if we can't yeah. get out. It's scary. I mean, what are they, so what are, what are the laws right now in, in shipping and like, are, are you a lot, I mean, you're obviously a lot to throw equipment on a truck, but are they not allowing like installs? Are they not allowing like, like yeah. the, the deliveries right to your doorstep? Like talk about that a little bit. So right now, um, and we don't really do inside delivery anyway, unless we were doing a full installation. Um, I know Don, we ran into that issue with one of your guys where we mm-hmm. couldn't legally send anybody down because we can't get into the state. Right. Um, about that, by the way. He knew about that. I don't know. I think he forgot yeah. mentioning any names. I think he forgot about it because I knew about that. I knew that was. Yeah. Gonna... <laughs> but it's just, and we feel terrible because we want to be able to do literally everything that we're used to doing. Right. Um, so it's an adjustment, not just for the customer, but it's an adjustment for us as well, because we're not good at telling people no. Our job is to find a solution. So mm-hmm. it's kind of, we're so used to being like, all right, that doesn't normally happen. We can find a way to do it. And then now it's kind of like you have to tell people you can't or we can't. And it's like, it sucks. I mean, it, it, it puts us in a bad position because we get upset, not at the customer, but that we have to tell them we can't do something because all of our business runs, everything's gray. There's no black or white. So every situation is different. And our job is to find a solution. If we can't do that, that, that kills us. Like it's, and that's what we're running into sometimes. Right. So, are you selling uh, big ticket items like treadmills, bikes, uh, cardio equipment that's a little more expensive, but it's moving now? We actually, yeah. So there's been a ton of um, more movement on cardio pieces because it's great to see. I'm actually, we're all working from home, the people in the office. So I see everyone outside just walking back and forth all day. Um, but the people that actually really want stuff now, they're getting you know more Airdyne bikes, more rowers, more ski trainers, stuff to kind of change it up. Um, to make them feel like they're actually at a gym or able to get more out of just a regular walk or, you know, riding a bike. So it, it's good to see. Um, I know adjustable dumbbells, the sets from like five to 90, those instantly skyrocketed. Right. Um, right. So it's, it's crazy. I got a pair of, I, I got a pair of adjustable dumbbells actually right behind me. They're like, a, they're like an older set of power blocks. I think those got to be 10 years old, but it really does change you know, it just changes the mindset. You know, like fortunately when all this was going down, I, I kind of blew the whistle early and I got, um, and I had a kettlebell rack here, but Perform Better sent me down kettlebells. And then we got, I'm looking back at it right now. I'll, I'll kind of lift my camera for those people who are watching it. But if you can see behind me right now, I've got that erg, I've got the, the ski erg, I've got the, the air nine bike, I've got the rower, I've got my kettlebells. I've got a, like a Perform Better deck right there, which is actually been getting a lot of use of. And then like bands and power blocks and an adjustable bench and, all that stuff. I got to hang like my, my band rack and stuff is all thrown. I'm going to end up like putting that <laughs> nice. And yeah, no, but I'm going to end up adding like, this is open, like this is open a big door for me because like, what am I missing right now? I'm missing a power rack. And if I had like some type of an adjustable pulley system, like I almost feel like if I had a power rack and where I can like drop weights and stuff, like I could do whatever I want here. Um, but now it's really like, even for my business, Aaron, it's, it's really, I think a lot of people who have been kind of, eager to get involved into the digital space now i think they're forced to have to and i think this is going to open a lot of doors not only for you guys in reference to outfitting home gyms but i even think for coaches now i think now they're like everyone's been kind of well you, you know it's like learning to swim is one thing being thrown in the in the water and having to learn to swim for survival something completely different i feel like that's what everyone's going through right now yeah but the one thing i have to say that i really like is for everyone that's kind of in your situation and, and gym owner situations and trainer situations, we're hearing some really, really great ideas on how people are keeping their clients engaged with them. So yeah, they may have a set of dumbbells. Yeah, they may have a band. Yeah, they may be starting off with body weight for the first couple of weeks, like just to keep people. But 
to hear some of the ideas that we've gotten from people like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm having coffee talk with my clients. Like we're not working out. We're not doing anything. But Frank Nash is doing that, right? I actually heard yeah. Frank was doing that. Yeah, I thought yeah. that was I mean, really- Frank has been doing charades. They're doing trivia nights, like stuff where, <laughs> and I realized I'm like, that's so smart. Cause I'm, I've been doing it with my friends from home and we'll have like a virtual happy hour. And I know a lot of people have been doing that. And it's not something that we could never have done before. We just didn't. Right. Um, but now it's kind of like, if everyone's doing it with their friends, if you're a gym owner or a business owner, do it with your clients. Like you don't have to keep them, just keep them engaged because they're going to come back. They need that sense of community. And that's what we hear a lot of gyms. They thrive on community and they thrive on, you know, culture and things like that, where it's, if you can keep that during this time, I don't care if you have a band or a rower or power rack, it's not going to matter. That's, that's, that's everything. Derek, it's funny. Last year I launched my first challenge last year. And um, it did very well, but it was also at a time where I think I was being pulled in a lot of different directions. So this, like last week when all this went down, I just kind of donated a free four-week bodyweight program and, and gave it to as many people as wanted it, right? And then after a while, I started realizing I was getting a lot of comments like, well, are you doing any online coaching? These are things I would just never do because I was so focused on my brick and mortar business. So last minute, I turned around and I'm like, let's launch a challenge. Let's just get some engagement because there's people right now messaging me from like Europe, Asia, like, like just different spots all over the world. And they're stuck in an apartment and they have no engagement. So I launched this group chat yesterday. Like I closed the challenge last night at 10 p.m. And I launched a group chat yesterday. And I've literally been waking up all morning and all I've been doing is just fielding messages, questions. I've been putting up videos Thursday night, I have a, a Zoom call with like 120 people coming on the call. And everyone's excited because they're like, oh my God, this is going to be the first interaction with anyone I've had in a while. I'm like, how cool is this? Like, like we're going to, like, I'm going to introduce this whole group of people that have never met each other from all over the world. They're going to be able to engage at a time right now where going out and having a cup of coffee with someone sounds more exciting than it ever has been. You know, like we take those things for granted. And those are the things that I think Frank, when he went and did that, I think that's brilliant. I think more coaches need to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, I'm looking at the Peloton example and then you see the spin classes that are suspended. So they're delivering bikes to people to run their courses. And as an equipment supplier, have you thought about maybe doing that sort of engagement? Like when we sell a rower, like maybe there's like a, an engagement as part of that. Like maybe you have a, a network of trainers that connect with that piece of equipment that That's can, cool. that can engage with those people. Like, I mean, maybe you could even do it with dumbbells or kettlebells, but I'm yeah. saying like the, the bigger stuff where people, you know, take off on that Peloton example of like, Hey, you bought equipment from us. Why don't you work with one of our trainers too? And add some value to that, that yeah. purchase. No, that that's true. Um, the best part is that we have people like Don and and all these other people that are, I mean, they're doing it already to like Don's online platform is bigger than probably anything that we could reach. So to have him doing it already um, and kind of promoting us has been a big help. The one thing that we don't want is that we can supply the equipment. We had a lot of people say, Oh, well, you're going to run these online training programs. We're like, well, no, (laughs) like we have professionals for that. Um, There's a, a very fine line between being the professional that provides the education and being the person that does the education. Um, So obviously, I mean, we're going to do everything we can to push our people to the Doms or the Frank Nashes or anyone that can help them for what they have um, because they would do so much better than we could ever, ever offer. But yeah, I mean, they've been doing a great job. So we're lucky enough to have those guys that have already been pushing that for us um so they've kind of taken the stress off of us promoting it but um i think it's been great so far well i think that's the best thing about i mean the best thing about you guys i mean it's it's almost something that i've never seen any business invest so much and and i'm a relationship guy but like so much into relationships and you guys have been doing that between you and chris and rob and you know and the whole team um you know, even with the summits, right? This has been such a big part of Perform Better. I mean, those summits, you've got to have between, was it three to 5,000 people at all five locations total type of thing, right? Yeah. Roughly. Yeah. I mean, this has been, I mean, they're, they're hosted in Orlando, Long Beach, Chicago, and Providence, which is their biggest one. 
So these summits are something I look forward to every year. I mean, and you get some of the best coaches, you know, around showing up and they're kind of, you know, speaking about their craft or something that's important to them or they feel like the industry really needs. And this isn't, I mean, it's got to be in jeopardy right now, potentially. I mean, you hope it's far enough away where it doesn't have to be canceled, but who knows? I mean, have you guys put any thought into that so far? I mean, you have to make it. We have, um, it was hard enough just canceling the one days so far because that's like, that's our build up to it. Um, I'm hoping that we don't have to cancel the summits this year only because I know it's a CEU year too. So that's interesting enough to hear what's going to happen for people that need it for CEUs. Um, we've talked about possibly canceling the first one or two, if we have to, um, it's going to come down to the locations and what we're allowed to do and things like that. We have talked about what we do. If we do have to cancel it, do we do an online platform? Is there a way we could do a live something uh, virtually? So We're still hoping not to cancel anything. I know there's been some big conferences already canceled in May. Um, I heard there was a big yoga one or something that was already canceled, but that's not till October, which I thought was strange. But then again, you never know. So it'll be interesting to kind of see how this goes forward with everything. But I'm hoping that we can kind of wait till the last minute and still pull in a crowd and keep them going. I'm wondering if, uh, you know, you think a stupid idea sometimes, maybe it's a, it's a terrible idea, but you, but you, but you, but no, I'm like, I'm the, I'm the king of this. I'll throw out 99, the hundredth might be really good, but you know, it might be something you guys can actually use to your advantage because I mean, the only downside of those summits, the only downside I see is that when you go, you can only be in so many places at once. And I can't tell you how many times I've gone to seminars and I'm like, oh wow, Boyle's speaking and I want to listen to him for the 200th time because I always pick something up. <laughs> Charlie Weigrath is speaking at that same hour and I want to listen to Charlie. You know, and then you always like, you can only see one person that hour and the day is filled with speakers. So you got to be careful on, you, on who you choose. It would almost be great, like God forbid if they do cancel it, if every speaker went on his plan and filmed their presentation and sent it in and it yeah. performed better, was able for like, you know, whatever it was, the same cost, offer all the videos now where the coaches yeah. have access to those, you know, to those lectures where they can, where now I can go back and in, you know, three weeks, watch a different lecture every day when I got home at night. Now I'm able to sit there and absorb all that information. That's the only positive I can see from it. And I still think that would be something that's beneficial because people are going there, yes, to network. I totally understand. We're moving the network element, but there's things you can do with chat groups and maybe it's something where, you know, the, the people who are listening to the lecture can jump on and go into the chat group with, you know, the person lecturing like myself or Boyle or Charlie, whoever it is, and then have the lecture and be able to answer questions on that chat group. And I think there's ways to set it up where who knows, maybe it could be more efficient and maybe there's still a way to network through social media. I don't know. I'm just throwing some dumb ideas out there. Yeah. No, that's not dumb at all. I mean, I know we've been looking into platforms to kind of see what other organizations organizations have used. Right. Um, so that's kind of, I mean, we just want to make sure we're prepared for it. Nowadays, you don't know what's going to happen. So um, obviously, it's something we can't wait for the last second for. But right. yeah, it's definitely, that's, that's your hundredth idea. It's not a dumb one. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I totally appreciate it. Um, so, what, so what's next for you guys right now? Um, I mean, right now we're just trying to, (laughs) what'd you say? Is it just day by day? Is it literally just? It is. It's kind of, um, I know it's, it's hard as the staff, like I said, everyone's working from home minus the warehouse guys. So it's, it's a little different team morale wise. I think, uh, Chris and Rob have been doing a great job kind of calling everybody, making sure everyone's, you know, doing okay. Um, stress levels have been very high because with the orders coming in and the volume of things and. Mm-hmm. Stuff going out the door um, a lot faster, but then some things taking a little longer to ship, whether it's, you know, a UPS or shipping things. I know their, their lead times have increased. It's kind of now you get a lot of people like, where's my order? When's it shipping? What's this? It, I feel like yesterday and today have kind of settled down after the last two weeks a little bit. Um, people are getting more into the flow of things. So as long as we can keep kind of our core group on point and kind of getting into a routine that's going to help. Um, but yeah, it's kind of day by day. It's kind of keep stuff coming in, keep talking to your customers, keep them feeling like everything's as normal as possible, I guess. And it's, I don't know what's normal nowadays, but um, yeah, it's, it'll be interesting to see kind of how things go and 
the biggest thing we talk about is what's going to happen when we do go back to normal, when we get back in the office, how is business, how's this industry going to change? It's going to be, is it going to be the same or is it going to be, you know, more consumer, completely different? Like we, it's, you just never know. So it's kind of just keeping ideas literally flowing every day. Like, what do you think? What do you think will happen if this, you know, what are some ideas that we can do in case this, this, and this happens? So it's a lot of, not just orders, but a lot of trying to think ahead and, and guess. And that's a little scary. Um, but yeah, I mean, right now it's kind of just do everything and anything that you can to kind of keep things moving along. Yeah. yeah, I think I think we're all going to be forced into that sort of reflection of what happens after. Like somebody was asking me about going to sporting events and I'm like, even that's going to change. Like actually going into a stadium with 10, 15,000 people, people are going to have a different perception of that. But uh, one thing I was thinking about in the equipment and gym industry is like, are people going to think differently about cleaning? Like how frequently, like I, I've have to watch, like I did all my cars and I cleaned every surface. That's a lot of work to do every <laughs> surface and make sure you get every crevice and everything covered and that you get it adequately with the right cleaning agent. And I mean, that's going to be a huge thing, don't you think? Yeah. Oh, definitely. That was the first thing to sell out. And I know right now people were projecting orders for when everything does go back to normal. Cause now they're like, all right, well, I can't have my gym not have, you know, a lifetime supply of gym wipes or antibacterial this or Purell or anything like it's, that's the first thing that went. And that's people are like, all right, well, I'll take another truckload. And you're like, what? <laughs> like, yeah. Get me it, some of that perform better toilet paper. Come on. <laughs> plenty of it. We have, plenty, we have it squirreled away. So that's, that's when we sell out of all equipment, we will sell that. I wonder yeah. what's going to happen. I wonder what's going to happen with, you know, with the big box f facilities opposed to because I, I know Aaron. I mean, a lot of the a lot of the small gyms, a lot of these boutiques have been thriving over the last several years, especially you know some of these you know specific concepts. You know, I've been hearing like Barry's Boot Camp and stuff like that. But when you start looking at some of the smaller gyms, like a Frank Nash or you know, I kind of consider even myself in that category with just about 15,000 feet. Like, are, are people going to start looking at us and saying, wow, this is going to be like the smaller, the more intimate, it's, it's easier to manage, it's easier to clean. Does that seem more attractive or are people still going to want to go into an Equinox, which in my opinion, you know, dealing with 2000 people a day touching equipment, like that could be dangerous. I think it's really going to depend on the person in the gym because I actually had this conversation yesterday is it's the big box gyms that I would worry about like the $10 a month clubs. And I know a lot of people don't cancel. So that's kind of why they can charge and there's all, right. everyone has all their theories, but um, they, they rely on that for the year. So if something happens and they don't get the new memberships rolling in because they're closed, like that doesn't hurt them right then. That's going to hurt them next year and the year before because they're they're basing it off of their their timeline so that i think we're going to see a lot of those guys go under um or at least hurt a lot more than they thought um and in regards to the small guys or like the more intimate settings i think it's going to depend on the person um i think a lot of people are going to want something with more culture more community less people more intimate just to kind of have that um, whether it's a safety factor or they want something to feel more involved in case anything like this does happen again. Um, I mean, I think it's going to be hit or miss. It'll be interesting. I'm really like, I feel like there's so many options that it's like, well, it could be this, well, it could be that, well, it could be that. But yeah. I think it's going to depend on how much, how long this takes. Like nobody really knows. And I yeah, <laughs> and, and if people start building up their home gyms, do they go like, Hey, I can do this at home. I don't need to go to the yeah. gym. Right. So yeah. there's going to be a ripple effect. I wonder if I wonder if someone's gonna almost systematize like a cleaning process. You know what I'm saying? Like I wonder if they're almost gonna like if you're going into like every five thousand feet of gym space is gonna need this package and it needs to have like the amount of square foot covered with with these wipes and these specific things. Cause there's just there's certain equipment, you know, that we I mean, before we closed, we were cleaning like crazy. I mean, I can't tell you how many trainers were taking wipes down on dumbbells and just doing whatever that um, they were trying to do. But I, I'm wondering if, you know, is, is there going to be some uh, cleanliness uh, protocols that are becoming systematized now? Because 
Listen, I wonder, I mean, be, besides this, I wonder how many people a year would catch infections or, you know, get a cold or get sick due to their gym not being clean or they're getting on that, that yeah. treadmill and there's, and, and they're touching sweat that was on it that wasn't wiped down properly. And they're going and they're wiping their face. It sounds disgusting, but come on. Like this, this and then there's the other, the other, there's the other side where people are saying like, if it's too clean, my immune system is going to weaken because I'm not facing all these different. That's oh, bullshit. It's never, <laughs> it's never too clean. I don't know. Derek, what's your thought on that? Well, even just the, the, the methodology of how you, what you use, because I know there's a lot of information coming out about if you have things that are sudsy, like with foam and from the soap, it breaks down this virus better than antibacterial stuff like alcohol, right? So, I mean, do you use a different type of cleaning agent? Like is alcohol wipes enough or is, it, is this better to use a soapy based type thing? And what's the effect on the equipment and, and the upholstery? And that's a huge, huge question. Right, right, 100%. We shall soon see. So Aaron, um, are, you guys, are you guys still able to take orders right now or is it something that's like, are you guys just keeping as fast as you can? We are you cranking away. Yeah, it's kind of, I had to start early today and everyone seems to be working late. It's, it's weird because you get like the colleges that are like, all right, we just agreed in our conference that you can send stuff to the athletes. So it's no longer a violation or what they were talking about. So we need 600 of these sent to all of our athletes. That's so we're incredible. getting a lot of wow. that now. And we're like, and they're all shipping to individual places. So it's like, all right, you take this 50, you take that 50. Are the colleges that. paying? Are the colleges paying for that? Wow, that's yeah. so wow. a lot. But they had to, so we found out it wasn't an NCAA violation. It was a conference issue. Okay. So when the conferences were meeting to agree on what they were going to do, it came down to the conference. But wow. it's amazing to hear how many schools are so different because some conferences are doing it. Some schools are like, we're going to take care of this. Some schools are kind of like, we're going to wait. And then you hear some of the bigger names that are kind of like, well, we can't do anything. We're on a freeze because they don't know what's going to happen to our season. And we had so many, you know, season ticket people pull out already that you're talking some of the biggest schools in the country. Like some of the top schools are on a freeze because of that. So it's like, it's, it's, crazy to hear all the stuff that's actually like going on it's insane i didn't, even, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think i didn't even think about that i wasn't even thinking yeah. that the universities would start flicking the bill for um a lot of these individual athletes but it makes sense and it's smart um yeah how much how much equipment are they are they able to order for for each athlete or is it just something where it's like send them some beds send them some kettlebells and they're and they're done type of thing yeah, it's kind of, I mean, when they're sending out 600 kits and they're kind of basing it off of a home program and you got to keep in mind it's a college student, so they're probably, you know, not going to do too much. But um, we've seen like different sports do different packages. So one might have a kettlebell and a couple bands. One might have vowel side bands and a jump rope. Um, but for the most part, it's been pretty simple. We haven't seen anything too crazy. Uh, I know a lot of the pro teams are doing the same thing for their guys. Same type of thing. Some teams can't order just based on budget. We had some teams that are like, all right, we have this money. Let's use it before Friday when we have our meeting that says we can't use the money. So they're like, <laughs> put in, you know, 4,000 of these. Like, wow. And then you have um, some guys that are just like, depending on the sport, we can't do anything right now because obviously we don't have a season. So we're on a freeze, but we want this packet that they're sending out to their athletes. And it's kind of like, now it's the athlete's responsibility to order for themselves. So we've had a lot of pro guys do that. Um, so yeah, it's literally like, Hey, I'm on this team. I want that package. Hey, I'm on this team. I was supposed to do this. Hey, and you're like, it's very cool though. It's very cool. It's, it's, yeah. it's giving everyone an avenue to be able to, I mean, no one has anything to do, but actually work out right now and whatever else that there is to do. So yeah. Aaron, let us, let us know if someone wants to place an order right now, how do they go about doing it? Oh gosh. Um, they can either call the 800 number. Okay. What's that number? Uh, it is 1-800-556-7464. Okay. And they can literally talk to any of our staff. They can go online. I know we're running free shipping right now. Um, they can awesome. email in. It's kind of like so many people were just distributing orders. So it's like whatever comes in, we're doing. Um, we have a live chat on our website right now. So if people are interested in like they have questions, but they want to get directed. They can reach out to the live chat and do it that okay. way. Um, it's really whatever they're comfortable with. 
And the, and the website is www.performbetter.com, correct? Correct. Yep. And, I've been, and I've been adding, like, I, I think daily, um, for anyone watching this, I've been adding swipe ups in my stories. Pretty much every day I've been including um, some sort of equipment or body weight. If there's equipment in there, I, I, I kind of disclose what, you know, if it's a band, you know, what thickness band is it? If it's a bell, what size bell it is and where they can get it from. Just trying to give people ideas. Um, you know, I mean, I, but if, if anyone's listening, whoever's listening to this out there, I would, I would prepare to, you know, this is going to be, this is going to be a while. We're, we're not going to be back to our lives in a week or two weeks. I mean, I think we at least have, you know, probably four to six weeks more of this. Um, yeah. So I actually um, heard today from a customer that I think their state, he was in Virginia and he was <laughs> saying that they were talking about being on house arrest for the most part until June. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy. My lease is up in, in end of May. I don't even know if I'm, I, I gotta be honest. I don't know if, I don't know if my location at Drive will ever see the light of day again. I mean, am I moving? Am I staying? Who knows? <laughs> but, you can um, open at your are, house. You have a perfect gym. Yeah, it's perfect here. We just need a, we need a couple other things and then we'll be good to go. But I'll talk to Rob about that. But Aaron, yeah. listen, thanks a lot for coming on. This is really helpful. I think you're a great understanding to everyone. And, um, you know, I'm sure I'll be calling you and bothering you about something sooner or later. Always, always. <laughs> yeah, I'll try, to get, I'll try to get this out right away just so that, you can kind of benefit from this as well. Perfect. That'd be great. Thanks, Derek. Aaron, you're the best. Love you. Send my Thank best, you. everyone. Thanks, Thanks, Derek. Thanks. Bye. Bye, guys.